Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I wanted to do a little update on this 100C track loader. Uh, since we brought it home, I've done a little bit of work to it. Time's been kind of hard to find, but uh, I did manage to get the belly pans pulled off. Got the uh, front belly pan and the rear belly pan, and there was a lot of dirt, debris, pine cones, rat poop, everything up in there which was to be expected out of these things. They I think probably hadn't been off in a long time. Unfortunately, we are missing the access cover right here. I'm gonna see if I could find a used one or else I'll uh, probably make a new one to go on there, just like the original. Did a little bit of research on the rippers. Um, I've got three of them, one's bent. The teeth were bad on all of them. Uh, I was able to find brand new ones through H&L Tooth, uh, about $200 a piece for the whole shank with the tooth on the end of it. Um, the next step is the engine's going to have to come out of this thing. Uh, the engine comes out with the torque converter assembly on the back of it. And you can see the torque converter housing back here behind the flywheel housing. It all comes out in one piece. Uh, you've got you've got the radiator out of here now, but there's two bolts up front, one on each side, one here, and one over here. And then on the bell housing area, you've got two bolts that go straight down here, and that frees up the engine from its mounts. However, there's a lot of hoses. These two fuel lines right here have to be disconnected. A lot of hydraulics underneath and then if we look back here you'll also notice there's two different versions of this transmission and this one's what's considered the large transmission it's the older one and uh, it's a little bit harder to deal with switching sides here the uh, the reason for the smaller transmission on the newer ones is that you can see this these two u-joints that are really close together you can't pull that u-joint out without pushing the engine bell uh bell housing and torque converter forward on these older ones whereas the newer ones with the small transmission there's a longer gap between the transmission and the torque converter and you can actually take them out separately it's a little bit nicer uh, not much room to work in here a lot of these hoses got to come apart the book says the dash has to come out. I I think I could do it without taking the dash out. I have removed all the hoses and cables and, and wiring harness from the engine. And everything's still attached to the, the dash portion back here, but disattached from the engine and torque converter. If we go underneath, I'll show you what we got to look at under here. Of course, our front belly pans off. So you see the bottom of the transmission, or excuse me, the engine. Uh, a lot of crud still up in here. The pine cone. I still got to get all cleaned out, but I'll power wash it out once the engine and uh, torque converter are out. Um, and you got this crossbar here, this equalizer bar. It goes under the bell housing. And if we go further back, this right here is your strainer for the transmission oil. The transmission oil and the torque converter oil are shared by a single reservoir. Uh, so I had to drain the transmission. I've already done that. And actually the guy that was working on it did most of that. Uh, they were complaining about some heavy oil leaks. There are hydraulic leaks under here. And by what I've seen so far, this uh, suction line is heavily deteriorated and swollen up, and I'm I'm going to venture to say that's part of the problem there. Uh, we'll get a new one on there when we put it back together. We'll get this strainer taken out and cleaned. I got a new O-ring from Case IH to go in there. Um, a couple of these other hoses are a little cracked and deteriorated. I'll make new ones while we got it out. But... Uh, Anyways, that's what it looks like underneath here. Uh, I still have to take off a couple of hoses. This uh, 90 right here has got to come off yet underneath. 
and I think that should do it. Everything else was uh, up top. But it's coming along. I'm hoping to have the engine out maybe by the end of the day today. But something I wanted to show you that kind of uh, confirms my, my thoughts on this is if we take out these bolts on this access cover right here, uh, we can pull this access cover off. And here we can see the uh, starter ring gear and this back portion is the torque converter and look what we have here with one finger i can spin that torque converter without spinning the uh the ring gear or flywheel which pretty much tells me the only thing in between there is the flex plate and i'm betting that flex plate is broken and here's what the flex plate looks like this is a used one i picked up online uh, it's still in good shape yet, but uh, I paid a decent penny for this one. Uh, unfortunately, they do not make these anymore, so use is the only way to go. However, I've got a really nice pattern here, and what I may do is take this to a machine shop and have them make me, you know, five or six of them and uh, sell a few of the extras to help offset my costs. Uh, so if you need one, I may have some for sale in the near future. Um, something I wanted to talk about is the TD7 and the TD8, as well as the 100 and 125 Series C and Series E use the same flex plate. Now the Series E did have a serial number cut off for an early and a late. And I believe that was when the transmission changed. I think the newer ones are the same part number. I can't confirm that right now, but I will, I'll check my books. And hopefully before I release this video, I'll have an answer on that. Uh, but anyways, we're making progress. And uh, thought I'd fill you in. Thanks for watching.